Father, Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. We want to thank you because goodness and mercy shall follow us. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the spirit of love and humility. Thank you for the spirit of holiness. Thank you for faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Are you sure? So today my sermon is a letter. It's a letter. A red letter day. <laughs> Valentine's. By the way, us popelo ko mali Valentine usi jali. Auko peke yako. There are many like you. Usi umie. There are many like. Love Valentine ni nini anyway? Hmm? Siku moja tu. Na maua ni plastic. Surely. Na nguo ya red. Surely. Hiyo ni kitu cha kufanya mtu asikia vibaya. Ni kufanya mtu ajinyonge. Joint present worship of white red. Alafu makosa unavaa red siku ya Valentine na wewe ni mfupi. Unakaa fire extinguisher. When we look at you we say, "Hey, what is this? What are those?" Hey. Wazimamoto. You look like a tablet. A, 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 a tablet, medical tablet. A pill. A capsule. Nakaka capsule. Black, white and red. Nakaka moxil. Nimeelewa kwa nini upati settings right? Anyway, I said my sermon is a letter. A letter to all of you. And my sermon is dear Christian. Dear Christian brother or Christian sister. Dear Christian sister or Christian brother. You see Apostle Paul used to like used to write many letters to the different churches. And those letters became so important to the church that up to date we are reading those letters. So a letter is something precious. It's something to be desired. How many have ever received a letter here in high school? Funky. How many have never received a letter? I know Jeff has never received a letter. Lift up your hand. Yeah, I know. His generation is not for letters. It's for emails and WhatsApp. And Avanso. Who is Avanso? Eva Chief Asa, even you. You never received a letter. Even a suspension letter. And you never received that one. I'm a leave out. So letters were precious in our days. In our days, the letters would mean a lot to us. The letters would mean something. In our days, they used to send us letters then spray them. Yeah. With a kiss. Mwah. Yeah, with a kiss. Apply lipstick, then put a kiss. Mwah. And a special paper. Those papers used to be sold for 25 bob. One paper like this, the full scrap. Unafanya draft kwa ingine, alafu unakamu, unaandika. Alafu unapeana uandikiwe. Handwriting muzuri. And calligraph. That's how precious letters are. Precious they are. The Bible says Paul was speaking and he said, I write this letter to the church of Corinth. He also says, I write this letter to the church of the Colossians. I write this church, I write this letter to the Ephesian church. You know the Ephesian church was like the church of Nairobi. It was an Ephesus church. It was a church in Ephesus. It was a deadly church. The things that were happening in that church are the things that are happening in the church of Nairobi. There were con men in that church. There were fornicators in that church. There were people who when they go to take the Holy Communion, like the, the communion, they, they eat more than others. They don't give others time. So when, when people come to eat, there's no food. So Paul said, stop this! You church of Ephesus! 
Behave yourself, Wana. If you are hungry, eat at home. The Church of Ephesus people, people are going to eat to be full. You see, the communion is a holy meal. It's not a meal you eat to be full. No. They, they eat to be, to be, they even were drinking to become drunk. Yeah, the wine. So it lost the meaning. Yeah. You want the, you would say, no, don't give me the body. Give me the blood. <laughs> give me more blood. Less body. Just give me the blood. Increase the blood. So he had to write a letter to correct that. So today I've come to write a letter to correct, to exhort, to uplift, to encourage. My letter is made up of so many things. And my letter is in point forms. Yeah. It's in point forms. Do you love the letter? Even if the letter might be too, too hard, will you still accept it? Will you still read it? So my letter is dear Christian brother or Christian sister. Now, as a Christian, there are several things that you need to develop. There are cores that should be developed in a Christian. In the same way, in your body, there are core organs that if they go undeveloped, you easily become sick or you easily succumb. If your brain is not fully developed, like I see some of you, when I look at some of you, I see the problem. See at Nimeaka, it's the brain that is not fully Because if I see how you are dressing, somebody with a fully developed brain will not dress like that. I know your problems. Some of you, the issue is not that you are a bad guy. It's that your heart is not fully so you are always heartbroken. <laughs> Because your heart is not fully developed. You've not grown a thick skin. That's why you say, ah, why were you not coming to church on Sunday, on Saturday? What was a battle? Oh, Pastor, that day I was down. It shows your heart is not fully developed. When your heart is fully developed, it pumps whether it's likes or not. You know, it doesn't have options. If your heart stops pumping for an hour, you get what is called heart attack. The next thing, you are dead cardiac arrest or heart attack cardiac arrest is different from heart attack cardiac arrest is the electrons in the heart that make the heart have irregular pumping of blood heart attack is when one side of the heart is enlarged kidogo so more blood flows in layman speaking I miss it doctor I mean, see, Dr. That is just layman's language. Yeah. If a doctor is here, he'd explain in a, in a better words. You're not even lay. <laughs> so what are the areas that I would want you to develop as a Christian? Number one, dear Christian brother. Dear Christian, dear Christian brother, develop the ability to fight. Develop the ability to fight. Dear shepherd, Develop the ability to fight. From today, when you see someone misbehaving, just tell them, Dear Christian brother. Don't say anything else. Just say, Dear Christian brother. That should be the refrain. When you see someone who is a weakling, don't even tell him, Develop your ability to fight. Just tell them, Dear Christian brother. You see, being born again is a honorable thing. Being in the ministry is even far much more honorable. It is a honorable service to God. However, being a Christian, and also by implication, being in the ministry, implies the reality of serving in a military campaign. Kwa mkristo na kwa mwanajeshi ni kitu sawa. Mwanajeshi na mkristo ni kitu. That's what the Bible says, that we are soldiers. In the army of the you know, I said the song. I'm a soldier in the I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the everybody stand up. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. If I die, if 
So you can see, you are what? Sit down, you are a soldier. And as you know, the work of soldiers is not to sell ice cream. Who has met a soldier selling ice cream? Who has met a soldier selling water? Who in fact has met a soldier walking with his uniform in the, in the streets? Rarely do you find our Kenyan soldiers walking with uniform because the British order doesn't allow that and we are part of the British order maybe the Americans too you cannot find them with their, with their uniform intermingling with civilians because that uniform is precious so in the same way you are a Christian who is a soldier and by implication you are at war you need to know to be a Christian means that you are at war so you become subject of discussion of wicked spirits whose goal is one to extinguish your light. So you must learn to fight and for that matter, to fight well. You cannot give up or retreat because once you became a Christian, you decided I am in for war. And warfare is so important for a Christian. You see, if you are a soldier, you must know in the battlefield, there's a certain language that is spoken there that is not spoken here. Here we don't say, take cover. <laughs> we don't say, down, down. Have ever heard someone say, hey, what? Watch my seat, watch my seat. We don't say that. Six, six. Watch my six, watch my back. We don't say that. If you hear someone telling you, watch my six, they're telling you, you say, I. Like six. Even me, I heard they were saying seat. So I was wondering, what should I, what should I watch their seat? So there's a language for war. There is three o'clock. That means what? Look at the three o'clock side. That is the side the enemy is coming from. Three o'clock. Right side. There is Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Mayday. By the way, most of you don't know where Mayday came from. I will not tell you. But you should, you should go and research where the word Mayday came from. It's a military code for Mayday. Another military code is D-Day. 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 should go and study where D-Day came from. Anyway, for D-Day, I can tell you. Just go and look for Mayday. D-Day is the day that the Allied forces had decided they are going to finish the Axis forces during the World War. History students. They said that day we are going to drop a bomb. So it, it didn't have a particular date, but there was a D-Day. So the code name for finishing the war enemy was D-Day. So when they had the signal D-Day, it meant today we drop the bombs and finish the war. That's where the word D-Day came from. Yeah. So when you tell someone, this is the D-Day, remember World War Two. Yeah, when the bombs were, were dropped. So all those are military terms and military language that are in a battlefield. So as a Christian, you must acclimatize to the terms of warfare because the atmosphere of war is a noisy atmosphere it's not a, there's nowhere you fight and you fight in silence no 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 we fight in noise we fight in bizarre situations that's why when you come to church because it is a war zone we are not quiet we are noisy we are shouting because the enemy responds to the atmosphere of war and the atmosphere of war is the atmosphere of noise. So, dear Christian, develop your ability to fight. Wow. Sit down. Develop your ability to do what? That is to say, develop your ability to hear God even in the midst of noise. Even in the midst of chaos, in the midst of bad situations, develop your ability to hear your creator. When you are discouraged, develop the ability to still hear God in discouragement. When you are accused, develop the ability to hear God even in accusations. Because you are a Christian, and a Christian is a soldier.
who is involved in a war. So, it's important for you to know that you have an enemy whose sole goal is to extinguish you, is to finish you. The enemy after you doesn't have another idea. Uh-uh. His idea is not that he atumpige tu kidogo. Aske uchungu, kidogo tu. His idea is if he gets a hold of you, is to kill you. Malisa yeye. The Bible says he comes not only to steal, to kill and destroy. So not only does he steal, he kills. And it doesn't stop at that, he destroys. That means even the dead body, he goes, looks for acid, pours acid on the body until the body becomes like the soil, powder form. His intention is to destroy completely, to extinguish you completely. So as a Christian, develop your ability to fight. Because the enemy you're fighting is an enemy whose agenda is to extinguish you, is to finish you. The enemy Val does not want to pinch you. Uh, 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 uh. No, 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 no. His intention is the slap he gives you is a KO. His slap alone. Knockout. The intention is the boyfriend he gives you impregnates you with the first shot. Mara ya kwanza. Twins. That's the intention of the enemy. <laughs> That's why you wonder how come unbelievers they engage in that thing and they have no much consequences. Because you are a soldier and you are at war. And the enemy who is after you is an enemy who wants to extinguish you completely. He doesn't want to arrest you. Uh -uh. He doesn't want to put you in jail. No. He doesn't want to negotiate and he's trying to get information from you. No. What he wants with you is to extinguish you, to finish you completely. His intention is to do what? To finish you. Nothing else. To finish you. Malisa. Where? Chinja Ua. Malisa. That's what he wants. Every day. Every minute. He wants to finish you. When he looks at Alvin, he's looking, what is the best way to finish Alvin? So the weapon he's using against you is a tailor-made weapon. It's not one weapon fits all. It's not a blanket weapon. It is a one specific. He knows when he goes to you, women don't have a problem. So he can't create a weapon called woman. You, he knows food is a problem. So he creates a weapon called food. So your downfall is food. Because the weapon is specific. It is, I'm a prophet. It is tailor made. He knows for Baraka. Yeah. His problem is maybe pride. Yeah. So he tailor made everything that would make you prideful to finish you. He says, You see, gold watch, nice dressing, beautiful wife, success, a little money, a car. All those things are meant to finish you from the enemy. There are others he knows this one. If I give them a good girl, when they see a girl, they can't say no. When they see a skirt that has been hanged on the clothesline, they have to go and confirm. What's the skirt? They say, hey, your skirt is going to move to my ego. Because the enemy you're fighting is out to finish you completely. He's a seasoned warrior. He has been fighting for long. He has been at this thing for some time. And you, you just came into the battlefield. So the noise alone is scaring you. The atmosphere alone is scaring you. But the enemy has been acclimatized to the atmosphere of war. He, is, he has, knows the sound of bazookas. He's used to the sound of grenades. He's used to the sound of machine guns. You, if you just hear a bullet, a gun, a gun shot right now, ta! you should see how people will run here. I just one day I should come with a gun and, and, and plan with someone. Just fire in the air. You will see one day. One day. You see, I am married. 
and I thank God she's not here today. So I can say the truth. I've always looked for a way to communicate this truth. And look at God, who is, who is always gracious to us. He gives us ways to communicate truth. So we were, we were planning to get married. Actually, in TGL, we call it the test of marriage. Because it has happened to almost all my pastors. So, we were in town. We had just come from Sharia house. We were walking. <laughs> Do you want to know what happened? I see you one day going to Sharia house. I see you living with that place with a certificate. I see you getting married one day. Amen. So as we were leaving Sharia house uh -huh. with my beloved, uh -huh. with our certificate, we were talking about how our life will be a good life. How it's me and you together forever. Look at how loving you has brought me this far. Now lock me with you together in a room. That's, that's the discussions we were having. You can imagine how sweet those discussions were. Then Vala, we did not know. Punde Sipunde. Gafla Bin. There was a riot somewhere. And we didn't know there was a riot. So we just walked right into, into the riot. And immediately we walked right into the riot. Sema Kimeumana. When we got there, is when the police had been given the order to fire. If I tell you the truth, without lying, Nilipo skia pa! Nika skia pa 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 pa! Skri pa pa! The lady who has been telling me it's me and you forever. I tried to look for her. I couldn't find her. Mugu niponye. Alichukua sheria mkononi. Na akaenda nayo. Straight to her, to her school, KU University Town Campus. She went showing the idea. I'm a student, I'm a student. Me, I didn't know. I, I was a student at Nazarene University Town Campus. So even me, hapa, hapa straight to the school. When I got there, I said, ah, but I was with my beloved. Where is she? So I called for her. I called for her. I asked her, where are you? She said, you, where are you? <laughs> oh, guapi. Oh, guapi. Yeah. So I realized that in the atmosphere of war, in the noise, we were not acclimatized. So our love could not hold. Yeah. Our love could not hold us in the, in, the, in the midst of war. In the atmosphere of war. So everybody had to run for his life. So dear Christian, develop your ability to fight. Acclimatize yourself to the atmosphere of war. Acclimatize yourself to noise. Acclimatize yourself to pain. Because it's part of the Christian journey. Don't think because you are now a Christian you will not feel pain. If that's the Christianity you think is Christianity, you are mistaken. Christianity is not a blessed me club. Christianity is not a place of I will not feel pain. Christianity is I'll feel pain but I'll carry myself as a lamb. Jesus thought he was God. When he was going to be crucified, he carried himself as a lamb. He was in pain. He was in a very bad state. But he carried himself as a lamb because he was acclimatizing himself or he had acclimatized himself to the atmosphere of war. So he had developed his ability to fight. You know what about the enemy you're fighting? The enemy you're fighting can see you but you can't see him. That's a different dimension of war. In the conventional war, when the enemy sees you and you see him, you know what you can do. But in the yeah, you take cover. But in the unconventional war, the enemy attacks like this called guerrilla warfare. They attack from anywhere, anytime, any any day. They have no warning signs. So the enemy you're fighting, my dear, can see you. He knows your likings. He knows your desires. He knows everything about you. But you can't see him. So in such a war, it's very different from any other war. So in such a war, there is a secret for it. Do you want to know the secret for it? Yeah. Sit down, I tell you. Uh, Baraka and uh, come, Chalo. Come here. Come up here. I want a blindfold. I want a blindfold. Quickly. Anything, yes. Blindfold, Chalo. So in this, in this fight you are involved in, the enemy sees Susan. He knows Susan. But Susan doesn't know the enemy is waiting for him at the corner. 
The devil knows he will wait for you after you failed your exams. That is when he's going to bring suicidal thoughts and discouragement. But you don't know that. You don't even know you'll fail your exams. In fact, you are believing God that you will do well. But as fate will have it, you fail. So the enemy says, I know the outcome could be this. He's not sure, yeah? But he knows there are, there, is, there are two possibilities. Either he passes or he fails. So in the midst of the two circumstances, I'm still going to prepare myself. If he passes, I will hold him. If he fails, I'll still get him. So, fate have it that you fail. So the enemy looks at you in that state and prepares for you in that state. The enemy you are fighting is a prepared enemy. Akujangi too, he, know, he prepares for all eventualities, all outcomes. And as a Christian, you must learn to prepare for all outcomes. When Pastor Ken lost his son, when we were going to the, to the, to the what is that thing called, theater, no, the ICU. I told him, young man, I know you have faith. But I want you to know, in the midst of faith, faith is preparing for all possible outcomes. Because yours is to believe. As for the one to fulfill the faith, your beliefs is God. If he decides that your faith will produce life, let it be. If he decides your faith will produce pain, let it be. Yours is to do what? To believe. So I said, prepare for all possible outcomes. Prepare for the outcome of not getting married. It's an outcome. Don't say, ah, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. You are a soldier. Prepare for all outcomes. You are a soldier. Prepare for not having a child. Prepare for having a sick child. One time when my son was unwell, he was diagnosed with brain, his brain had, had an issue. So while we, we received the news the first day from the doctor, I was so discouraged. Then I went home and prayed. Well, I was praying. No, the following day I was praying in church in the morning. I like praying in the church in the morning sometimes. So I'd go there, pray, pray. When I was praying there, the Lord asked me, shall you only accept, accept good from me and not evil? When he asked me that question, I said, by the way, what makes me think that I should only receive good things from God? Who am I? So I went and told my wife, shall we only accept that which is good and not bad? Yet he is God, he is sovereign. On his table there is both good and bad. Even Satan is on his payroll. Oh, yeah. Satan works for him, for your information. So Satan is fulfilling God's agenda. So I went and home and read that scripture for my wife. Shall we only accept that which is good, the book of Job, and not bad? That was our deliverance. And because of that, our son was healed. Because we said, Lord, we surrender. Whatever outcome you want, I am in your hands. Whatever you choose to do with me. Paul, Job said, though you slay me, I'll still worship you. So even if the outcome is you slaying me, I'll still worship you. No matter the outcome, I am in your hands. I'm not going to turn. Because the enemy is waiting for me to turn. He knew this would be an outcome. So he was prepared for this outcome. And I'm not going to give him what he was looking for. You understand? Yes. yes. So develop your ability to do what? To fight. Sio kitu kidogo umekosa kuja kanisa. Kwa nini? Oh, my neighbor did not talk to me when the pastor said talk to your neighbor. Oh, the usher did not sit me where I was supposed to sit. Oh, the crush I like no longer. The hospitality did not give me biscuits. They they said we should wear white rubber shoes and there's dust. I was not casted for movie stars. Sina Air Force. You, it means you're not a Christian. A Christian must develop his ability to fight. So the enemy you're fighting is an enemy who can see you, but you can't see him. So this is the enemy, and this is the Christian soldier. So the Christian soldier, he's at war. The Bible says the weapon we use, they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. So number one, you have a weapon. Number two, those weapons operate in a specific environment. They are only mighty in God. So out of God, those weapons are useless. Your weapon is only mighty in God to the pulling down of. So as a Christian soldier, you must, number one, know you have a weapon. And number two, know that that weapon is only good in a particular environment. In this case, they are mighty through 
God or in God. So what does a Christian soldier do? Because you are at war. As a soldier, it's your responsibility to continuously listen to the voice of your commander. Your life and death is pegged on this simple instruction of carefully listening to the voice of your commander. When soldiers go for war, if the commander says, lie down, they don't start saying, why, why, why? They all lie down. Kuna nini? Wana kujia wapi? They all lie down. Awazangi kutuwa gano. Nasama, apana tulali. Tuambie nini? Nini ni wewe bwana? Nini? They all lie down. When they are told, enter the, the, the handakis in English are called what? Handaki kwa kizungu ni nini? Wani ya mjui kiswaili sanifu? Waluya. It's not a manhole, there's a name. It's just not gata. Not tunnels. Kisiagi. Ah, I'm on ID. When they are told jump into those holes, I've forgotten their name. They ju- when they are told jump into handakis, they just <laughs> jump in. You understand? They don't start questioning why. Because life and death is pegged on their simple obedience of instructions. Can you imagine if you are a parent and you tell your children, you are walking in the streets, and you tell your child, stop! And he doesn't stop immediately. And perhaps you had seen a car coming. That's how you are ran, that's how you are ran over by your parents, by your car. Because you were told to stop. <laughs> he was told, stop! But because he had not developed his ability to be obedient, a car ran over him. Because life and death is pegged on your obedience to that still, small voice. When he says, stop! You don't start saying, I stop to the right or to the left. But you know, I'm in love. I love this guy. Anaskizanga gospel. Nimukavo. Anakujanga church once in a while. Ntamuombea, I'm a prayer warrior. The mother prays for her. Or for him, I'll change him. Ah. So this, Nitaida, this is the Christian soldier. He's fighting an enemy. I want you to look like, to behave as if you're fighting. His, his defense and his, his weapons will only be effective if he knows where the enemy is. So how will he know where the enemy is? The Bible says, thank God for he has given us the spirit. For who knows the heart of man except the spirit in him? In the same way, who knows the heart of God except the spirit in God? So thank God that God did not send you to war blindly. He sent you to war and gave you a guide to keep you in the war and bring you out alive in the war. So the voice of the commander is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Oh, pastor, so how do I know when the Holy Spirit is talking to me? How do you know when your mother is talking to you? How did you know the voice of your mother? You trained yourself by continuously listening to that voice. So right now your mother can try and change the voice and you'll still get her. Because you've trained yourself to continuously hear the voice. Are we together? So he's, continue fighting. What kind of soldier is this one? So his, his salvation is in listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you see, he even wants to hit his, he, he wants to hit, he wants to hit the wrong people. Because he's zealous. That's why the Bible says, zeal without knowledge is destructive. Because he's zealous, he's fighting. But he's fighting the wrong enemy. So you see, he got so close to the enemy, but he didn't get the enemy. Because he doesn't know where the enemy is. He doesn't know where the enemy is. So how does he succeed in fighting the enemy? By listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. So I want you to move three steps to your left. Three steps. One, two, three. Now while you are there, I want you to turn to your left. Turn to your left. Then move two steps to the front. One, two. While you are there, I want you to throw a lower cut. 
That's exactly what the Holy Spirit does. You get to hit your enemy by listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He leads you to where the enemy is. Now imagine if he had gotten this far and stopped obeying. Number one, he has already introduced himself to the enemy. He's in his presence. He's in his camp. Do you think the enemy will let him out? What will the enemy do? The enemy will kill him. The enemy will kill, steal, kill, and destroy. That's the intention of the enemy. To steal, kill, and destroy. Dear Christian brother, dear Christian sister, develop your ability to fight. Develop your ability to fight by getting acclimatized to the atmosphere of war. Number two, by getting to know the voice of your commander. And number three, training yourself to fight with the weapons that have been given to you. The weapons that are mighty in God. Otherwise, you are as good as dead meat. Number two. Thank you. Please unfold him. Dear Christian. Dear Christian brother, develop your conscience. Develop your service in which is unhappy. 12 30. I sent you 1228, so I have two minutes. I take your time. I'll finish at one. Is that okay? Or you'll be very hungry. Shepherds must develop their conscience. A Christian must develop his conscience. Develop your what? First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.5 Did I give you the scripture for the other one? All these are found in the book of Timothy. The other one is First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.18 Make a good war with the prophecies. So this one is Timothy 1.5 I got this. I was doing a study on the book of Timothy. This is, this is from my quiet time. You'll also one day do a study of the book of Timothy. Develop your conscience. Timothy 1.5. The Bible says, Now the purpose of the commandment is this. Love from a pure heart. From a good and unsincere. From a good conscience. Conscience. Develop your conscience. Do you, have guys, do you guys have TPT? Give us TPT. If you do. TPT. I like how TPT puts it. Then I'll show you what happens if you violate your conscience so what is your conscience your conscience is the referee in you is the umpire in tennis they are called umpires in football they are called referees so there is a voice that is in you that continuously speaks to you which is scared yeah. if you want to do something silly it says watcha watcha before you entered into that relationship there is a voice that was telling you kijana Atakumaliza. Atakumiza. But you said, no, I am in love. Love is blind. Before you stopped going to class, there's a voice that was telling you, someone was asking you to leave a school fees. Now where was the end? Shule. There is a voice that was telling you. It's called the voice of your conscience. The beautiful thing about the conscience is given to everybody. It is a gift to all humanity. Not just to Christians, to all all humanity have the conscience. Some call it the gut feeling. But the correct word is conscience. I want it on the screen. I want TPT on the screen. You don't have that app that has TPT. So, I want to be able to Before I was scared, before I was scared, I love her. There's a voice that was telling me, don't lie with a shikwa. And I told my shepherd, Nico. Odaya, she is come school. I love to go to Kapala and a shepherd gata. But before to Patane, before I lie, there's a voice. Develop your conscience. Develop your 
The Bible says, now the purpose of this commandment is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. Continue. I want it here. Oh, you don't have it there. It's okay. Okay, now. Okay. Verse 6. From which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idol. Uh -huh. Continue. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they, nor the things they. So because they violated their conscience, the thing has screwed up. The thing has become something. So there's a guy in the Bible, he's called Hermes and Alexander. Have you heard of these two guys? Jump all the way to verse 19. Jump to verse 19. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected. Do you, okay, use Amplified. Do you have Amplified? Use Amplified. Holding fast to faith, that leaning on the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence, and having a good, in bracket, clear because the conscience should not only be good it should be that means there is a conscience that is not clear it's called a seared conscience seared conscience comes from repeatedly ignoring warnings from your conscience the more you ignore the warnings of your conscience the more you sear or silence that conscious voice so the bible says by rejecting and trusting from they are conscience. Some individuals have shipwrecked their faith. The TPT says, by deliberately ignoring their conscience, they have shipwrecked their faith. Therefore, I handed them over. Continue. I handed them over. Verse 20. Who is there? Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexandra, whom I have delivered to Satan in order that they may be disciplined by punishment and learn not to do what? Because they seared their conscience. They deliberately violated their conscience. Therefore, I have handed them over to Satan to be punished. God himself saying, Paul was speaking, he said, I release you to Satan to teach you not to blaspheme. And to teach you not to deliberately ignore your conscience. Now, it's a grievous sin to ignore your conscience. Now, in countries where they experience a lot of earthquakes, tsunamis, they develop something called a warning system. This warning system is put in the sea. It has the ability to pick up information that shows them a tsunami is coming or an earthquake is coming soon. So what the gadget does, it sends information miles of kilometers away and prepares the city or the town of eventualities of a tsunami. Because the truth is they can't change an earthquake. Neither can they stop it. So the, the best they can do is to prepare for the eventuality. So what happens, that warning system alerts the city and the authorities, and the authorities begin to evacuate people and take them to safety. So what happens when they ignore this warning system? The tsunami comes and kills people. The, the earthquake comes and kills people. In the same way, that's what your conscience is. It is a warning system that has been put in you by your creator to warn you of things to come, to alert you to be prepared of eventualities. But a lot of Christians have not developed their conscience. They think conscience is not a godly thing. They say, me, I am led by the Holy Spirit. Only. As many as are led of the Spirit, they are the sons of God. There is a difference between being led of the Spirit and being led of your conscience. Your conscience is your common sense. Develop your conscience by developing your common sense. You have, you have suspended your common sense. You don't go to school, but you pray that you will pass. Watch a ujinga, shaitani, purple. 
Acha ushaitani. You don't want to work, but you are praying, you will make money. God says I'll bless the work of your hands, not the prayers of your hands. A lot of Christians have suspended common sense, which is their conscience. Conscience? I don't know if it's the voice of the soul or the voice of the spirit. What I know is a voice. <laughs> what I know is a voice. And that voice is in everybody. Every human voice. Every human being has that voice. Whether they are born again or not. That's why you knew that some things were wrong without anyone telling you this is wrong. How did you know? The conscience in you. The conscience in you told you, Kuiba Skari ni makosa. No matter when you are going to steal sugar, you are waiting for everyone not to see you. You hide. Why were you hiding? It's a good thing to do. You are hiding because your conscience, even though you are a small girl or a small boy, was telling you, Can you nafanya? It's wrong. The voice of the conscience is a warning system put in us by God. Develop your conscience, develop your common sense. Sio kwenda kwa msichana usiku alafu unasema ni kwa nimeenda visitation Develop your common sense Uongo bwana Watu si wajinga bwana You cannot go to visit a woman in the night alone then you say you are going for visitation then you say one thing led to the other Nonsense Develop your common sense And you know the age you are in is the age of emotions is the age of desires is the age of fires hey. is the age of when you see you say hey. hey yes even even ladies not just men in fact nowadays ladies are worse hey. ladies prepare the way hey. 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 they prepare the highway na kiamua ni wewe awaitishi ruhusa kuguza and all that is happening to you because you've not developed your conscience and how have you not developed your conscience? You've deliberately ignored. You've deliberately violated your conscience. Deliberately violated your conscience. Kimaksudi. If you had listened to your conscience, imagine you'd not be pregnant right now. Because the conscience was telling you, don't fornicate. You say, Nileo tu. Tsuku ya musho. Atu simpe. Aki vanyana skia. Kichwa tu. Iyo kichwa tu gonorrhea. Sasa hii uwezi kaa hivi, unakaa hivi. Unataka hewa. Unajikuna. But if you had listened to your conscience, uko kuna jikuna? Uko kuna jikuna? Sasa hii unasema ni kumoto. Ni kumoto manze. Why did you kumoto because you did not listen to your conscience? Before you started doing that business, there's a conscience that was telling you this business will take you from Jesus. You've, there's a voice that was telling you within you. He busy ni poa, ndio. He job ni poa, ndio. Lakini he job, itafanyi wacha kwenda church. That voice was there. If you can be honest with yourself, not searing your conscience, you are genuine with yourself. You will say, if your conscience is clear, you will say, truly speaking, my conscience had warned me about this job. Before you met that con man, in the name of a lover, the conscience was telling you, this guy is going to con you. You knew it. Ulijua bwana. Yeah, you started saying I bind Satan. God is with me. This door God has opened. But the door you are saying God has opened, your conscience was telling you. Wachana na hii njia. Sasa vibaya na huko. Your conscience was telling you serve God as a reward. Serve God now. Become a shepherd now. Look, all of us can become shepherds. Yeah. All of us have been called. All of us can become pastors. Yeah. Yes, it's not just Pastor Ken and Pastor Sue and these pastors here. All of us can rise up and become. Amen. You can rise up and become. become. Say, I can rise up, I can rise up and, become. and become. Because your conscience is already telling you, you can become. Your conscience is telling you there are many opportunities. Your conscience is telling you, you can achieve. You can become successful. You can succeed. Your conscience is speaking to you. But you are deliberately ignoring your conscience. Therefore, you become like Alexandra and Emmanuel, who were handed over to Satan for punishment. And they made shipwreck of their faith. So their faith was reduced to useless. Their faith had an accident. 
That means your conscience works on the platform of your faith. So if you violate your conscience, you violate your faith. Or you make a shipwreck of your faith. So your conscience becomes clear because of the faith you have in God. It is the, the, your faith in God that clears your conscience. So even though you don't he listen, if you don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, at least you hear the voice of the conscience. Nobody doesn't hear that voice. Nobody doesn't know it. Yeah. 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 Both believers and unbelievers. You can call it what you want. You can call it gut feeling. You can call it kakitu. You can call it whatever. But there's that voice in you. And that voice is making it's either clear or not clear based on your faith and your obedience to that voice. It is a warning system. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Lugaga. I was trying to remember that name. Before you said yes to that boyfriend, the conscience was telling you, this boyfriend, church but this is the end. You're not so sure about him. Because your conscience sometimes tells you, Siko shua, niko tu hapo, niko chwani chwani, usi jaribu, amo jaribu. You are uncertain, is your conscience telling you. So he's blowing the whistle. I'm a, I'm a play on. Una play on. Lakini ya pana. I'm a hini risky. Wacha na nayo. Una sama, ka mbaya. Sayi yuko mbabaya. Sayi tunaongea, ona sasa, uko mbabaya. Upa babaya, uko na kisonono, uko na gonore, uko na kaswende. Kibaya, kimejitokeza. But you would have avoided this mess if you had listened to your conscience. If you had listened to your conscience, you'd be serving Jesus now. But you said, wait. What you don't know, the things that God tells you to do, if you don't do them now, they become more complicated and more hard to do over time. It is easier to serve God when you're single unlike when you're married. In the sense that when you're single, the only person that needs convincing is you. Vis-a-vis -vis when you get married. And now you come and tell your wife, oh, now I feel like the Lord is calling me. So the people who need convincing are two. is you and your wife. It is even harder to serve God when you have children. Because the people to convince are now three or more. It is harder to serve God when you have a business because now the circumstance to convince and to make them understand why you have decided this fate is even greater. The things about God, if you don't do them now, they became hard and complicated over time. That's why you need to listen to your conscience now. Not tomorrow, now. When that boy was bringing gifts to you, that mbaba, there's something was telling you, don't receive these gifts. Don't take that phone. Utalipia. Utalipia. Utalipia ikitu. Wait, nani nataka kupata tusi mubure? Eh ama gari. Nani economy ama PS? Utalia. You say ah no ni mpoa. They are still good humans. They still exist. Now the good human is asking you to become a good The good human is making you to, he's asking you to become a good human. So you have to go, do some good human, humanitarian activities. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, develop your conscience. Your conscience is a guide that God has given you. As a Christian, develop your conscience. Dear Christian, develop your conscience. Develop that. If you develop that, you will not be in so many messes you will be in. You not make many mistakes. Look, I don't see people in my office. And I have a nice office. But nobody comes for counseling in my office apart from my inner circle. Only my inner circle accepts in my office. It's not that I am, I am an evil man. I am not an evil man. I am the righteousness of God. Of course, evil is resident in me. But I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But why don't I see evil in my office? Because my conscience tells me, what if someone comes and says something? And you are just the two of you in this office. How will you save yourself? It's your word against them. And people believe evil faster than they believe good. So they will believe. They say, hey, Akbana, Pastor, Before Pastor, she explained. What to see what Jinga Before she explained. And before people believe you. 
The story has become something else. The story has blame. No kondo has danganya. Wewe mchungaji alikuwa anakula kondo. Ona zenye amenona. Ona. Ona wewe ona wewe ona. Eh ona ona ananyemelea. So what, so how did I follow my conscience? If you want to see me and you're not in my inner circle, I see you from the altar. After the service I, they set up a table for me and and the seats. So if you want to see me, you come there. It's not like I don't have an office. I have. But that office is for specific people who my conscience is clear with. My clear my conscience is clear about. I trust them. They have seen my worst, they have seen my best. So I trust that they will unless Satan enters them and God forbid they can't turn against me. But where were conscience yako ma violate? Umeharibu. Conscience yako ilikwambia usiende kwa huyo msichana. We ni shepherd. We ni shepi shepi. Chorea. Usiingie kwa hiyo nyumba. Usiende usiku. Hata msitembee na yeye. Msipite shortcut. Bro, umekosa nduthi ya kwenda huko unatafuta mwingine. And your conscience is telling you wacha bwana. Wacha. Utamwombea mchana. Watu wakiona. Watu wakiona. But wewe because you violated your conscience. Wewe huyo kasema hata nikosa nduthi nitakimbia. Kasema baby I'm coming. Wewe huyo mpaka twala. Usiku. Unafika huko umehema. Usiku. Usiku. Unapata hala masimu unasema usiniguze. I have a mission. I'm a man on a mission. I'm a man on a mission. I I, I, I must pursue. I must work while it is still day. Here we are. The story has mutated. The story has become what it was not supposed to become. But how did it start? Ukirudi ukitoka huko unaibiwa. How did we get here? You seared your conscience. You violated. You deliberately violated your conscience. Dear Christian, develop your conscience. It's an important organ to develop. It's important so that if you don't hear the voice of God, at least the voice of conscience, you will not fail to hear it. Conscience was telling you, don't talk to your father like that, he will slap you. You say nini, si anichape kofi. Kwani nini nini? Bala ya kofi ukapigwa head. Uka faint. Sasa hii tunaongea uko na black eye. Na forehead. You have been disfigured. But your conscience was telling you behave yourself. Say sorry. That's say sorry. Your conscience was telling you say sorry. Acha. Pasi ada jam. Mwambie tu sorry. Unasema ah. Unasema ah. Pasi ada jam nini? Pasi namjua. Eh, pasi hata sangine mimi namuelewa. Aja mingi venye watu wanasema anga na jamii. Mimi najua kum handle. Hiyo siku unasema unajua kum handle ndio mambo inaenda sege mndeke anakuhandle anakupanga anakupanga na unge avoid these mistakes by developing your conscience you lift unge panda ungesema tu acha nitembee kuna mtu anakupea lift unasema zi acha nitembee lakini wewe unasema but i'm saving i'm saving unasema na hiyo vumbi na niko na haraka najua I'm being frugal. I, I I went for this business so that I can get money to pay tithe. Wow. And your conscience was telling you, bro, relax. She go watch her na imambo. Yo yo do yo bezu yo yo bezu mepe wa job ya wine and spirit watch her. Before before us use as yonja. Ukasema azi. Mimi nataka tu kazi. Because the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. You are searing your conscience by violating it develop your conscience your conscience will tell you there are some relationships that you have and your conscience tells you see maya there's nothing evil there's nothing wrong with you being a friend to pastor pinton there's nothing evil but your conscience tells you what if people misinterpret this relationship run from it just believe your conscience not that there's anything evil because the bible has told us avoid anything that has the appearance of evil not evil appearance of it so why should you be seen hanging out with your lecturer all the time ni wawili tu mnakuja na gari yake mnatoka na yeye kwa ofisi yake unaenda kukunywa chai jamani okay fine he is a father to you let us believe that he is a father 
walisema walisoma na baba yako sawa atukatai lakini don't you think in our generation it has a certain appearance so why don't you just avoid it because of the appearance i kai vizuri i kai tu poa unasema hii kitu si mbaya lakini ikai poa i was telling that one day we were with my wife somewhere and she wanted me to do some games with her like we had gone for a picnic so people were playing it was a it was a, a picnic set so guys were playing so she wanted me to play certain games because people were playing all of us it was music and and, and stuff so i told her mimi my conscience is telling me i don't get involved in this and there's nothing wrong it is you're my wife and i'm your husband there is nothing wrong whatsoever however mtu akitokelezea tu hapa from nowhere atachukue video aweke mahali tutajitoa aje my wife told me no babe i am your wife the one who the, the only person who cares in this world is me he said concentrate and focus i said concentrate and focus i said my conscience is i did not use the word conscience i said me vanya nasikia z and i didn't say the miri i just said vanya nasikia z but she insisted so because i want to be a good husband no sooner had i started than she told me kuna mtu anakurecord nyuma yako the same person who was telling me concentrate focus she told me kuna mtu anakurecord nikamuuliza ametoka wapi akanambia ako na simu nyuma yako si tano so i turned i said boss Landa zako molio. I said I said this is my wife. Shida yako ni nini? Akasema I know you Pastor Boni. Malisa, Malisa, Malisa. So you see there was nothing wrong with it. There was nothing wrong with it. There's nothing evil. But it has an appearance. Because they didn't expect a pastor should be dancing perhaps in their mind. There's nothing wrong with going to a club. There's nothing. One time we went for dinner at Kiza. You know Kiza? Oh, yeah. Kiza Kiza used to have a club downstairs and a restaurant upstairs. So we didn't go to the club. We went to the restaurant because one of us was working there. He the one who had invited us. So we went straight, went entered the lift, passed the club, went to there. But while we were leaving, we went we went to be because the guy was working there, he was showing us around because it was a nice expensive place so he was showing us around. when we were just living like this i had a tap it was a friday night pastor boni pia unakujanga huku before i start saying sisi mbona wako restaurant is a whole story is a whole story say yo my wife is in front and we were with kina joy I told them I so I, at that point I explained to them you see what I'm telling you it has nothing wrong but the appearance is creating ideas one time we had gone for holiday with still my squad my inner squad so I was walking with Cess holding her like this we were walking into a hotel so we walked to the hotel pastor Mark pastor V are behind us and other guys can I you know those guys so we are just walking we were checking into that hotel no we were checking we were looking if we should check into that hotel you also with us yeah we should also ch- if we should check into that hotel or go to a different hotel so we passed the lounge went to the swimming pool while we were there we saw people swimming but they st- when they saw us they stopped swimming and started looking at us i told says unazashtukia watu wanatujua wanashangana nafanya nini na wewe huku juu they are not seen the other guys so sisi hao kidogo kidogo nikasikia pasta boni i just told her you, you just see you see what i told you she so we of course if someone calls you scatty see to respond eh hey, how are you eh uh-huh. so he said i know you i listen to you but i live here in mombasa so by good luck my wife was just there so i told them you see there's nothing wrong with this but it can be misinterpreted very much very much because there's a certain appearance that it has it can be interpreted based on misinterpreted based on appearance for man looks at the outward appearance 
They don't know anything. They don't know. It's the ones who know the truth is the two of you. Yeah. But the people out there, they, when they see looks with a mubaba, they just say, Bas. Yeah. But because of the evil in the world, yes. things are seen to be some way. That's why it's good to develop your conscience. When your conscience tells you, this is not right, believe your conscience. Your conscience has been in existence longer than you. So believe it. Number three, and the last one. Number three, and there are more, but I told you I'll finish at one. As a Christian, dear Christian, develop your godliness. You see, sometimes it's better to be over, over apologetic than over righteous. You'd rather apologize before. And your conscience is always trying to help you apologize before. Anyway, number three, develop your godliness. First Timothy 6, 11. But thou man of God, flee these things, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. O man of God, flee these things. Then he says, pursue Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Christians must develop themselves to become more like God. Because Jehovah embodies spiritual characteristics that have been listed here. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. So as a good shepherd... As a good Christian, develop your godliness. Develop your godly characters. Because these qualities may not sound very powerful or even attractive, but they are the most important things a Christian should develop in his spiritual life. God is at work in us to transform us into the image of his son. Right? That's what the Bible says in Romans 8, 29. Romans 8, 29. The Bible says, For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren so god is out to transform us to the image of his son so our destiny is not success and fame our destiny is to develop into the image of god and what is the image of god the image of god is what the bible describes pursue these things righteousness go back to timothy 6 11 develop righteousness develop godliness so godliness what is godliness godliness is to become like god the bible says we behold as in a mirror and the more i behold the more i become what i behold that is to tell you what you look at you become like it and the more you look at the more you are transformed to be that thing the more you watch pornography, the more you become a porn artist. Yes. You become a superstar. The more you watch, the more you become. How did I learn to preach? I watched preaching. The more I watched, the more I became. Because you are being transformed to the image that is in front of you. What image have you placed in front of you? That image is what you are becoming. That's why when you look yourself in the mirror, you don't see a different person. You see you because you become like the image you are looking at. So the Bible says we are looking at Jesus as the object. So he's reflecting on us. We are the image. You understand? Because he is the object. But all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory. So the image you are beholding, or the object you are beholding, you are being transformed into that image. Whether you like it, if you watch politicians a lot, you slowly become political. You start arguing a lot. Nanza siasa. If you, are foot, you love football too much, you're slowly becoming like footballers. Your desires are football. Everything is football. Because what you behold, you are transformed into. 
So if you pursue godliness, you slowly become like God. You slowly have the attributes of God. You have kindness. You have faith. You have righteousness. Okay, let me say this. There's a difference between being righteous and righteousness. And there's a difference between sin and sinners or sins. Sin is the nature. Sins are the fruit of the nature. Righteousness is the nature. Righteous is the nature. Righteousness is the fruit of the nature. So when you receive Jesus, you become the righteous. Or righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That means you begin to have the nature of Christ, which is righteous. So you produce after that nature, which is righteousness. So you cannot say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But you don't produce after the nature. If you are a woman, you produce a child that is a human being. You don't produce a dinosaur. <laughs> or a cow. Or a goat you produce a human being because we produce after our nature so what nature are you producing after is it a godly nature or a wicked nature some of you you are producing after a wicked nature yes because a tree bears fruits after its kind you cannot expect a mango tree to bear avocado if you see that run ni mapepo run so christian develop godliness develop as a young christian these are the things i'll ask you please to develop these things will become very important to you a few years from now because your second half of life is made up of the characters you acquired in the first half and your first half is up to 25 your second half is 25 to 50. come peter you already developed some things so now start walking in the things you developed and if you develop the wrong things correct them early enough because so you are still in that phase it is not it's like concrete it's not settled fully it's still curing so you can easily mold it develop your conscience develop your godliness godliness is the nature of god so when we say this person is godly, we are in essence saying this person has the nature of God. If we say we, you are devilish, we are saying this person has the nature of the devil. Because there are things we expect from the devil. For example, lying. Lying. If someone lies to you, you are dealing with the devil. Because that's the nature of devils. Yeah? If someone steals, you are dealing with the devil. Because that's the nature of devils. If someone kills, you are dealing with the devil because that's the nature of the devil if someone is disloyal you are dealing with the devil because in him there is no faithfulness there is no loyalty if someone is dishonorable you are dealing with the devil because the nature of the devil is to dishonor that's why jesus said i have no demon i honor my father that means the nature of demons is to dishonor. So, if you dishonor, you are dealing with a demon. There is a resident demon. Look, a lot of things are spirits, eh? Not a lot. Everything. Everything you see in this realm has a corresponding spirit in the spirit realm. That's what the Bible tells us. I did not give you the spirit of fear. But I gave you the spirit of power. The spirit of love. In the spirit of a sound mind. Even a sound mind is a spirit. That's why when Jesus met the, the man with the, the madman of Gadara, the Bible says after he prayed for him, he came back to his normal sense. Because the spirit of a right mind came on him and he sat by Jesus and he went preaching in the ten cities. Because even a sound mind is a spirit. Even understanding is a spirit. Do you know why you don't understand in class? Because you don't have the spirit of understanding. Yes. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding. And all these are spirits that come from God. That's why when you develop godliness, you are developing the nature of God. Begin to be understanding. 
you begin to be wise. You begin to have the fear of the Lord. All these things are important to develop as a Christian. Develop godliness. Develop what? Yes. Let us, when we look at you, let us see godliness in you. Some things you are doing, there is nothing godly with him being an homosexual. There is nothing godly with being an homosexual. Don't lie to yourself that I was born this way. There is nothing like that. Why are dogs not born as homosexuals? If at all it is nature, see, even animals would behave like that. Show me a flower that is homosexual. Flowers are male and female. That's why when they want to pollinate, there is cross pollination. Or self pollination. Fish. There is nothing natural with being an homosexual. You are dealing with a demon. It's a demon that wants to perverse you, to change your nature. It's changing your nature. To be devilish. You are become, you are, because we are created in the image and the likeness of God. So is God an homosexual? Have you seen anywhere in the scripture where it says God? In fact, we are called the bride of Christ. That means we are female. He is male. So how can you come and tell me you are male and male, female and female, and you tell me you are born that way? Satan is changing your nature. You don't have godliness. You have devilish nature. You have a devilish nature. Yes. There's nothing as I was like this. Who told you you were born to open the boot? Sim 2. Pochi la biashara. And there you say, I, 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 I am, we should, the people should accept that I'm born like this. We will not accept. We will not accept. Look, me, I will accept the day you show me a cow, a male cow, going into a male cow. The day you show me that, I'll, I'll say, hey, because you will never see that. You will never see it. You will never see a, a male fish going to a male fish. Because that's not the nature of fish. Even Jogoa, really. Because, listen, shh, listen, that's not the nature of God. Satan is changing your nature. Satan is involved to turn you into something. He's involved to turn you into something. The Bible says he made him man and created his, in his image and likeness. Not only image, likeness. That means we have some likeness in us or we have some likes that are in God. That's why I'm saying develop godliness because that's a like of God. So that's why we need to have the likeness of God in us. What is Emma? Mimi ni be. Mimi ni dey. Call me them. Mana mana nyamaza? You cannot say you are them. Call me they. Call me it. That is not my pronoun. Call me others. Eh? Call me polyandrous. I'm gender fluid. Nonsense. If God wanted you to be gender fluid, you'd have left your mother's womb as fluid. But you did not live as fluid. You left with things that are fully formed. You left them fully formed. Yeah. So you, what you need to ask yourself is what is changing this? Yeah. What is changing it? Because if God wanted me to be gender fluid, yeah. when I was coming into this world, yeah. that would have been the case. Yes. Yes. Even Noah called the animals two by two. That would have been the case. Yes. Nothing else. But how come now after I'm into this world, yeah. it's when now I become fluid. You came in the whole package. That should show you that that's not the nature of God. So develop the nature of God, which is the nature of godliness. Develop truthfulness in you. That's the nature of God. Sit. Learn to be a truthful person. The Bible says Jesus is full of truth. Full of what? Truth. He is full of truth. Yeah. 
because you are becoming like the nature you are beholding. And the nature you are beholding is a wrong nature. Yes. Look, do you know how people become homosexuals? They start beholding that on TikTok, on media. Do you know the world we live in? We are in a campaign called the Hearing and Seeing Campaign. The world we are in right now is being won on that front. Hearing and seeing. What you hear and you see, you become. Fear comes through hearing and seeing. Faith comes through hearing and seeing. You change your dressing based on what you hear and see. Have you not seen some people, after they started listening to Diamond, they started looking like Diamond and dressing like him? Because the campaign we are involved in is the campaign of hearing and seeing. Why do you think we, we insist you listen to podcasts? So that you can hear and transform to what you are hearing. But you take unaskiza mambo ya JJ na ngono. You know more styles than married people. Some of them you are inventing. Live and cleave, you say, your special sex, don't teach me. You are here. I know, I'll teach you. Ndamfunza. Wona jua scorpion kadunga. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, what nature are you becoming? Develop godliness. So develop godliness. Develop what? I can't hear you. Develop what? The Bible says godliness is great gain. It's great. Yes. Godliness and contentment is great gain. So godliness is great gain. When you become, when you have the nature of God, you have gained so much. You've gained great things. Because not many have the nature of God in this world we live in. Let me tell you how Satan has managed to convince us of some things that are wrong to be considered right today. Do you want to know? Yes. One of the ways that Satan convinces wrong to be right is when he lies to you by changing the name. For example, Kitambo, if you hear this guy is a prostitute, you'd say, how can you be a prostitute? Yeah. That is very wrong. Wewe ni kahaba? Ah, ah, ah. That would even sound wrong. Yeah. Even saying it is wrong. And by the way, he was a prostitute. A prostitute is anyone who has sex for money, right? He's sex for money. So what is, what is having a sponsor? Is it not prostitution? Because it is sex for money. But when someone says, I have a Mubaba, yeah. I have a sponsor, it is sounds less evil. Yeah. It is sounds like something gisty, something desirable. So a lot of people are buying to that. Yeah. They're not like buying to that. They now think that having a Mubaba is not wrong. How did they get there? Satan changed the name. Just the name. Because the name has perception in it. So you can even talk confidently. Ah, I mean, I'm Babes. And feel nothing. But can you hear someone saying, Mini, me, 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 Kahaba? Mini prostitute. Ati mini, mini Malaya. Can you hear someone saying that? <laughs> By those in the owner, if you build up on your Kazi K Street, if you call them that, you offend them. They even say, Call me a sex worker. Don't call me prostitute. Why do they say that? Because they know what their conscience tells them this is wrong. So, how has Satan managed to change us? To, uh, for our conscience to accept that this is not wrong. Changing the name. Changing the name. Pornography. If you say, if you, if you say why, why are you watching pornography? It sounds wrong. But if you say it is adult entertainment, it is, sounds normal. It is, uh, it is adults entertaining themselves. Nipple sight. Not nice. Simimini adult. But in essence, it is pornography. Do you know, in the year, in the year 1985, they did a research in the U.S., 85% of the U.S. population was against homosexuality in 1985. Against 1885. They did the same survey in the year 2002. 70% of the U.S. population was pro-homosexuality. In 17 years' time. Do you, know what the, do you know how it changed? They, started in, they made policy in Hollywood. 
to always have gay scenes in their movies. So slowly what you see and what you hear, you behold, you become. So they managed to change the perception of the masses by what they were seeing and hearing. So right now in America, gazing is accepted as a norm. But in 1885, 1985, it was not accepted. It was a crime. They considered it inhuman. Inhumane. But because of what they saw. Now, the movies are full of violence and murder. Slowly, the society is beginning to become a society that to kill is to drink water. Because it's a war of what you hear and see. It's a campaign. It's called the hearing and seeing campaign. Masturbation is self-pleasure. Is there nothing wrong with masturbation? It's self-pleasure. You're fighting prostate cancer. That's what they say. Right hand rituals. You are a ritualist. How did you, how did you get there? Changing the name. So slowly, slowly by slowly, what we are beholding, we are becoming. So if you want to become godly, behold godliness. You start seeing you are becoming godly. You start seeing you like godly things. Listen to godly people. Associate with godly people. You start seeing you are, their nature is rubbing on you. Because I said, it's a nature. To be righteous is a nature. And righteousness is the fruit of the nature. So pursue righteousness. Pursue the nature. And the fruits of that nature. You cannot say you are righteous and we cannot see. The Bible says, Tell the righteous it shall be well with them. For they shall eat the good. No, no, no this is of the land. Of their works. Give me that scripture in Isaiah. What does the Bible say? They don't say the good of the land. Tell the righteous it shall be well with them. For they shall what? Someone. It's in Isaiah. Tell the righteous it shall be well with them. Isaiah what? Yeah, say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. That is to tell you righteous people have a doings. Or have doings. They have things they do that makes them righteous. So they will eat the fruit of their doings. So you have to pursue godliness. Pursue what? Everybody standing on their feet. Father, in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here today. To hear and to get to know you. I pray that all of us here as Christians, we shall develop the ability to fight. We shall develop our conscience. And number three, we shall develop godliness. Father, we want to become more like you and less like ourselves. Because there's nothing good that dwells in me. Everything that dwells in us is evil. But everything that dwells in you is good. So help us experience the godliness of God. Help us develop these things that you would want us to develop. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. Make them godly. Make them goodly. In Jesus' name. If you are here, every eye closed, every head bowed. You are not born again. I want to pray with you. If you are here and you are not born again. The first way to develop a godly nature is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you cannot have godliness because there's nothing good that dwells in you. So anybody here, lift up your hand and I'm going to pray with you, wherever you are. I want to pray with you. I want to change your nature. I surrender Thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice. 
everybody placing your hand on your chest. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I have sinned against you. I, have sinned against you. I don't have godliness. I don't have godliness. My conscience is seared. My conscience is seared. And I'm not a fighter. And I'm not a fighter. Today, Lord, dear Lord, I ask that you write my name. I ask that you write my name in the book of life. In the book of life. Let me become godly. Let me become godly. Let me become like you. Let me become like you. Let me have the nature of God in me. Let me have the nature. Write of God. my name. Write my name in the book of life. In the book of life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Amen. Why don't you give Jesus a hand clap offering? Wow. Guess what? You are now born again. Come on, you are now born again. Tell your neighbor you are now born again. Wow. Give Jesus a hand clap offering. Wow.